presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to Mike in Southern California. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Hey, Tom, nice to talk to you again. And I have to start out and first tell you, I love this trading room. This thing is great. This app, it works great. And uh, getting all your information, it, you're like instantly there. No delay, nothing. That's I know. Great. I Listen, Thank I you appreciate again. your growling problem with us. Your channel is in my pocket all day long. It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, man. You Thank you. Now, Tom O'Brien. What is going on, folks? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Let's take a look at what we got going on. First off, I hope you all had a... Good Easter. We were off Friday. Always love that. Uh, but it always kind of goes too soon. Let's take a look at the market today. We have the ES Mini trading uh, off about 0.24%. Uh, the Russell off about 1%. NQ basically sideways up 0.04. Dow futures also down about 0.71%. Not a lot of action going on right now. We can definitely see in the ES Mini uh, a little bit of a consolidation they have going on through here. Um, you know, there's been some conversation about a pullback. I, I know uh, Tim Ord had been speaking about that a little bit, and I, I could definitely see that, right? I mean, we've been making these extreme all-time highs. Um, of course, we're having some really solid economic data to kind of justify this movement, not just promises of interest rate cuts. Uh, but, of course, Powell said uh, they're looking for it. And you're even getting um, some big industry players calling uh, for a more robust uh, decrease in interest rates. So another big important thing we're looking at is gold. I mean, come on, look at this. Look at this chart. I mean, we've all been seeing it. We've all been there. Listen to Tim Ward, listen to Tom O'Brien. And they've been calling this gold movement for a while. And we just had, you know, not a lot of action in it until we see this takeoff. So what's going on with gold? Okay, well, you have China doing a little bit better. And real estate is doing so poor over there uh, that you're seeing... Uh, consumption of gold in China go up from there. Of course, also interest rates are supposedly coming down and there's generally an inverse relationship with that. Uh, so we're still seeing this pretty strong rally with gold of about 1.05% today. Uh, silver too, we're up at 25.09. Uh, and then copper, luckily, we're up at uh, $4.05 on the contract. Crude oil, Definitely some, this is light sweet crude futures contract. We've seen some upward movement trading about 83.86 will remain to be seen. Um, if we're gonna continue that upward trajectory, if we come back down and make a consolidation in it, uh, of course the bonds uh, do pretty stellar today as well, price wise at least. Tesla down about 1.11%. We'll talk a little bit about Tesla in the sense of what it has coming at it. We've been speaking, well, I mean, when I was on uh, I think last week and the time before, uh, I was talking about how Musk was saying that the Chinese pose quite a significant threat to American and, and really Western uh, EV makers. And it's because they're able to just produce these cars at uh, cheaper cost, right? And uh, I mean, really, that's, that's the major thing, right? They can just produce these cars for cheaper, therefore the sell point's cheaper. We'll take a little bit of a look at Xiaomi, um, you know, and, and again, I would say, too, for a lot of these Western companies, China is such a major, such a major market, right? I mean, we were talking about this with Nike, okay? Uh, Nike's sales in Asia and, you know, really predominantly China have come down. And I think what we're kind of seeing with that is uh, more of a national development in China with the younger generation who, who kind of want these more Chinese goods that want to set themselves apart um, from the more international kind of culture that we see. Uh, anyways, Xiaomi, this is a massive EV company in China, um, just pumping out some of their new EVs, something called the SU7. Anyways, long story short, instant sellout with it. And those are all, um, you know, going to take away from more base, uh, excuse me, not more base, uh, but other companies. What's interesting to note, at least about the circumstance with Xiaomi and the SU7 in particular, um, is you actually had talent from BMW and Mercedes uh, going there and working for them to develop this, which is pretty fascinating. Uh, let's see, the following, it's launched, SU7 experienced an overwhelming demand with eight 
88,898 orders in the first 24 hours. Now, this is what's weird, right? So let me just pull this thing over to you. I just want you to see the vehicle. All right, this is what the thing looks like. It loads, of course, there we go. Pretty nice, right? They're selling this thing for under $30,000, and that's in China. And I mean, just seriously, think about that, right? If they can produce vehicles that look you know, quite slick like this, right? Which is really what the American consumer wants when they're buying these EVs, these more kind of futuristic uh, kind of deals. They can produce it at, at something where they can have the sell point at, at below 30. I mean, you know, that's going to be an issue, I think, for a lot of major car manufacturers. Uh, regardless, it'll be interesting to see kind of how that plays out going forward. I want to talk a little bit about gold as well before we keep going. Um, you know, I think that listening, you know, for me, myself, right, I'm a young guy, I'm 27. Gold to me, until really working for Tom, was just kind of this, you know, this is what older folks do, and there's not a lot of motion in it. We all talk about crypto, but I've been completely proven wrong. The analysis that Tim and uh, Tom have on, and really particularly Tom, because he's been doing this for so long, has been invaluable to me and has really changed my, my mindset. So I'm speaking to young guys out there, right? Because I know how we get to think about stuff, um, but this is insane. And so what I want to bring up is that is the 22nd year anniversary of Tom O'Brien's The Gold Report. This is a major deal here, okay? This is 35% off the monthly price of The Gold Report for as long as you are a subscriber, okay? So that's roughly about like $71.65 off from about $119. Okay, the deal's there, right? 22 years, that should tell you something about how much Tom knows with this. But I want to show you this here as well. If you are a subscriber to anything that we've had here, or you've purchased anything from TFNN, uh, you got an email earlier today, and it was today's edition of the Gold Report, and it was released free to you entirely, right? Um, so if you haven't seen that yet and you haven't checked your email, definitely check it out, especially if you've never been in the Gold Report. But we're looking at the current portfolio we have now. We actually had a buy earlier today. I don't have included in this table, but again, if you're a subscriber to anything or you know we have your email, check it to make sure you know what we got. But look at this. I mean, these are the percent gains we're making right now, right? And this is being monitored constantly by Tom. I mean, it's insane. Um, I mean, come on, you're looking at Harmony at 70%. Anyways, the point is, we got such a good deal on it right now. Come check this out. This is 22 years in the making. Um, and uh, you're just not getting that, you're just not getting that experience anywhere, especially for the price that we have it at. Anyways. Let's keep taking a look at what we're going on. Apple, they have some interesting issues regarding uh, basically demand for their phones going down. We'll talk a bit about that. And Disney, I mean, you know, this is like an Easter, <laughs> an Eastern miracle. I was so nervous for this stock and we have just seen it crawl up continually. I mean, we're trading back at 121.40. I wanna see what the all time high was. Something around here, okay? 201, still quite a bit off of that, but this is positive movement for the stock that has really seen uh, some pretty bad days. Folks, stay tuned. We will be right back. Talk a little bit about crypto, maybe. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. 
But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, before we go on, we actually have a caller on the line, but I want to just take a look at something uh, real quick. Just to add to the gold, I'll just say it quickly. Essentially, we're also seeing a lot of central banks buying a bunch of it. Um, factory production in China has gone up. So there's some issues for them. Anyways, the point is, if China does well um, and their real estate continues to do poorly, uh, and the more we continue to have kind of instability uh, among the different countries, I think gold is in a pretty good uh, spot. Regardless, we have Michael from Orlando on the line looking f at LTCN. Michael, are you there? Yes. How you doing, Jacob? I'm doing well, Michael. How are you doing? Oh, good to talk to you. Good. You're doing a good job. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for calling in. What are we uh, we're looking at here? Looks like this is... Um, it's a Litecoin Trust. Yes. Um, I bought it because the proof of work yes. algorithm, to, you know, I think they're going to get their ETFs before, like, say, Solana or yeah. or Ethereum, the proof of stake. And I was just wanted you to see, see what you thought of this one. Yeah, so let's, let me see here. Let me try to pull something up. So I want to look at the Litecoin price currently. You know, with Grayscale, you have, a, let's see here, Litecoin, I think, has a pretty decent adoption um, from some larger companies where things like Solana, let's look at Solana today, right? They're under some major heat. Um, obviously, a lot of that got liquidated by FTX earlier. Um, think about 7.5 million worth. And I believe something to do with Bankman Freed essentially pushing it, and now the media is kind of going against it. Litecoin itself um, trading down about 6.4% today at 98.34. My major issue with, it's not an issue, I just think for the full-scale adoption, like what we're looking at, what, what's so good with Bitcoin and what's so good with Ethereum in these markets is they have this name recognition, right? Mm -hmm. When you're asking your average person on the street what they think about with crypto, they know Ethereum, they know Bitcoin. This gets all the drive in, right? I'm not seeing right now the, the adoption uh, or confidence of Litecoin in things you know, like BlackRock and things like more, um, I, would, I would say more traditional uh, investment companies. That's not to say Litecoin isn't a bad coin. I, I think it's good and I think we're probably gonna see a higher price target than that. But for where I would be at now, like if I wanted to invest in something and 
in the hope that it goes from a trust into an ETF, I would look at these larger currencies. I, I think we have an Ethereum uh, ETF coming out pretty soon as well. So for the future, mm-hmm. like looking forward, I wouldn't know an exact, I couldn't give you an exact time frame for Litecoin. However, what's great about it and you're seeing right now, you know, we're up about 18.68% today with it. And there's no doubt that some of these more legacy coins, you know, like Litecoin as well, um, are definitely on the block uh, to get some ETF. It just at what point, I'm not sure. And do things like Bitcoin and Ethereum take away um, from some of that hype, right? That's kind of, that would be kind of my input on that, um, if that oh, helps at all. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, the, the trust is up 16% today? 18.94%. Oh, okay. <laughs> I hadn't looked at it. I was on the road. Yeah, it's uh, take a look at that when you get home. This is pretty nice. It's the LTCN Grayscale Litecoin Trust. So, oh, okay, okay, I own it, so I just hadn't looked at it. It's so violent. I try not to look at it. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, definitely. I, I just, I still think the the more you know, it's going to take a little bit longer for traditional investors to kind of get used uh, to crypto. Obviously, the younger generation loves it, and we know what it's about, and so on. Um, so I, I think like in that time period, what you're really going to see is things like Ethereum um, and, and like Bitcoin getting a lot of the attention. Um, and then at some point, you know, you'll see these more traditional ones as well, such as Litecoin that don't get as much love. Um, you'll see that moving on. I, I also, you know, I think when we look at the, the future forward with crypto, I know Litecoin's proof of, of work, but you're starting to see a lot more of these proof of stakes come up, you know. Um, and, I, and I wonder if we're going to see a larger pivot towards something like that. The more things get put on kind of like the Ethereum chain um, and, and more chains kind of spin off from that. Um, anyways, that's something interesting to think about for yourself. So, Oh, OK, because I was wondering if if they were going to be able to not be classified as securities because they were proof of they're not proof of work. That, that, that was that was. That was my why I was looking at looking at like the ones that were proof yeah. of work because Bitcoin's proof of work instead of proof of stake. That, that, that's the only reason why I was looking at it. No, well, okay, I hear what you're saying. That's actually a really good question, too, right? Um, I I think the SEC isn't fully sure right now what they want to classify as a security. Uh, they had oh, okay. Ripple today got fined something like up in the billion. I think 1.9 billion uh, for. And I would argue that that's not really a security, right? But the SEC, Mm -hmm. I think, hasn't really nailed down how they're going to list things out. I know they're also trying to call uh, Ethereum security, uh, even though that is proof of stake. Anyways, um, I hear what you're saying, and I I don't know what the SEC will do on that. But, you know, for instance, you know, Ripple today, uh, again, I guess somehow did something against the SEC, acted against um, some security regulations, and now they're being fined quite a bit. So... Oh, okay. So I'm okay. trying to find I, that. Uh, I appreciate the I appreciate the call. I, I think we better get back to talking goal again. <laughs> th- Michael, thank you so much for calling me. It was awesome to hear from you. All right. Okay. Thank you. And me, good man. luck with your LTCN, man. Right on. I hear you saying getting back to talk about gold, but uh, we'll talk a little bit more about crypto uh, today as well. I think one of the super unique things we have going on. Um, Obviously, we're about to go through a massive supply crunch, and this is going to be like from an economics perspective, really interesting. So we have the halving going on. We have all these new ETFs that are constantly trying to buy Bitcoin. When you have the halving, I, I essentially going to I'm seeing you know a supply side illiquidity moment, and you know what happens at that point, and I, and I'm not sure we have seen that yet. You know, so this is we'll take a look at this article a little bit here because I, I you know was trying to research. Has this ever occurred where you have a massive, massive, uh, you know, supply side or really, you know, sell side illiquidity? And uh, I was reading into this. Crypto Intelligence is a great uh, website for this. So let's take a look a little bit. Um, uh, the, the analysis highlights a looming sell side liquidity crisis as demand for Bitcoin surges, particularly influenced by the introduction. Okay, we were just talking about that of the ETFs. The increased demand, coupled with the dwindling supply signals, a pivotal uh, pivotal shift in Bitcoin's market dynamics, potentially altering its supply side uh, landscape irreversibly by the early months of 2025. CryptoQuant's report illuminates the stark reality. Okay, record Bitcoin demand impaired with declining sell side liquidity has resulted in liquid inventory of Bitcoin plunging to the lowest ever in terms of months of demand. 
The analysis focused solely on accumulating addresses, which are wallets that have not made any outbound transactions. That's interesting, right? Because that's going to free up uh, some of that liquidity. Uh, regardless, I think this is going to be super interesting to see uh, what goes forward in more kind of chain news. Ah, here we go. Well, folks, okay, I'll be I'll be right back. I wanted to find that. It keeps coming up and disappearing. I know that sounds ridiculous, but we'll be right back. Stay, stay there. It's a good point. <laughs> Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. All right. Welcome back, folks. Uh, this is what I wanted to pull up. This is, again, uh, Larry Fink. He's been one of the major champions of this, obviously, because his company's making money off it, too. But it's just, you know... 
you kind of come to a point, right? Like, even if you don't like crypto or understand, like, not that you don't understand, but like, it's just not something that like kind of makes sense. Because for me, for a long time, I didn't, I didn't get what the point was, right? And at some point, it just doesn't really matter because people are are buying it, right? So then we're sort of going to start looking at technicals with it and kind of what environment is created from it. Um, so this is the spot Bitcoin ETFs holding soar past 252,000 Bitcoin. Uh, Fink says he's pleasantly surprised by retail demand. The BlackRock, the world's largest manager, significantly, uh, equity manager, has significantly increased its Bitcoin holdings for its spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund. Uh, as the iShares, basically they made a ton of money off it. He came out and said, essentially, this is going to compete against gold. And it, it remains to be seen if that's the case. Um, but regardless, we're seeing such a major move in it. And really the idea of blockchains going forward, you're seeing China right now, um, they're actually uh, creating a blockchain for the Belt and Road Initiative. Now that's not gonna have a cryptocurrency connected to it, um, but it's a blockchain uh, from a company called Conflux. And essentially the idea is just to make interstate trade uh, far easier, far more mainstream. Uh, you know, you have your ledgers that get updated immediately. It's very accurate what was, trans what was uh, transacted. Anyways, it's very, very cool to see how this is gonna go forward. And uh, yeah, anyways, we'll talk some more about crypto in the coming weeks, because um, I think it's something interesting, you know, to focus on. Anyways, let us move on here. Sorry, waiting for some loading. All right, let's talk a little bit about Apple. Give me one second, guys, sorry. All right. Trading at 169.97 now. Uh, essentially, we've had a, we've had some Wall Street firms uh, kind of cut the price target for it. Okay, they're having declining earnings. There's iPhone slowdowns, of course. They're getting uh, there's a lot of competition in China now, which was a decent amount of money they were making. Oh, good lord. Give me one second, guys. Anyways, there's a projection uh, for lower EPS coming now for the calendar year 2024. Consensus estimates for Apple's March quarter results are at some risk. Some people on Wall Street say uh, for Apple's June quarter, that puts them at material risk. Simply put, the iPhone unit shipments are too soft, uh, owing to both organic demand, but also to competition. And that, again, I think is the big thing. We're going to see that with a lot of different tech companies, especially on the consumption side. Uh, in China, Apple is facing significant competition uh, from domestic brands Huawei and Xiaomi. Uh, obviously, we've been down quite a bit year to date. If I can get to this. Anyway, we're, we're going to get this chart thing fixed, fix, guys. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, when we get that fixed. Take a look at Microsoft as well. I'm trying to hop to another story that is also interesting uh, regarding some more antitrust things. I don't know what's happening with it. Essentially, Microsoft is splitting teams from the office. This is from antitrust pressure ramps. Microsoft possibly hoping to deflect the blow of ongoing antitrust investigation in the EU. Basically, they're spinning it off and selling it separately. It'll be interesting to see this kind of decoupling. And I don't really know, you know, going forward, I think what competes with things like Microsoft. I, I get that, uh, I, yeah, they have a bunch of different products and everything. The Europeans are so good at hammering them. And I'm, I'm going to be, I think, kind of concerned as well what happens with OpenAI uh, from this, right? You get these large tech companies that are able to kind of invest in, and get a whole bunch of different avenues of business. Um, and I, I think, you know, we're going to continue to see uh, quite a bit of bump in the road, especially with higher interest rates. But uh, when those come down, you know, we'll be okay going forward with that. I'm working on it, guys. All right. We'll talk a little bit about AI as well. Um, we have some new stuff coming out from OpenAI. I think this is where you start getting, I think, some revolutionary movement, right? So they're creating, they're working on voice apps, essentially, right? The voice apps for AI are kind of okay right now, uh, but they're not phenomenal. 
What what really starts shaking up? And I was talking with my family yesterday, right? We're talking about things like uh, we have family members who are, uh, you know, financial planners, and I get worried that some of these more traditional jobs like that, that are kind of person facing, uh, are actually at risk, right? So one of the arguments I was making, and I kind of thought about it a little bit, is things like financial planners. Even if in the future, let's say five, ten years from now, you have you know, let's say AI, let's say the group, the company that the financial planner works for essentially has an AI and they make these different kind of packages, right? At that point, what you're really going to be doing is selling these financial packages. You're still secure, even though you're a salesperson, you're still secure because it's that human to human interaction. But if we get everything uh, more automated and really over the phone, you're talking about some some pretty significant issues with this kind of AI voice. I mean, you know, we We'll use companies like Fiverr in order to work for advertisements. And, you know, there's, you pay some money to get some of these voice actors kind of filled in. I mean, you already have things like Artlist, where I promise you, you've probably already heard AI voiced commercials anywhere, and you'll have no idea, right? This is going to continue, I think, to be kind of a major issue um, for people who are people facing, uh, but then also, you know, for security purposes. Um, remains to be seen. I think, though, what we should focus on is kind of pushing forward this technology. Give me one second, guys. I'm, I'm going to try to restart some stuff here. Okay, folks, stay right there. I'm going to get this figured out on break. We can come back and actually talk about some stuff. Stay right there. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. It looks like we've got everything fixed from the break. I'm taking a look right here at Micron. We have had some major movement in Micron, and the question is, what is going on with it? Okay, so right now we're trading about four, up about 4.7% at 123.48. Obviously, some pretty significant volume on that as well. The major thing is they're able to produce a certain kind of memory interface, which is called high bandwidth memory. Um, and this is going to be pretty imperative moving forward for AI. Okay. So there's been a lot of conversation, I think, too. And I have, I have people ask me about this, like, just in my daily life. Like, do we keep investing in Bitcoin? Like, do you buy Bitcoin? Like, what would you do? And I... I get weird with it, right? So let's let's take a look. Okay, you had you had Sam Altman come and say he wants you know 14 times what the international market for semiconductors are to build semiconductors. Um, you have you know things like Nvidia approaching the size of small economies um, at insane valuations. Everything that even gets mentioned with the name AI goes up entirely. I mean, even like. Take a look at it. It's a small island in Gila. It's it's top level domain like ours is dot com naturally here and theirs is dot AI and they've made tens of millions of dollars just off this alone, right? And that's just getting URL names. I mean, so you think about anything that makes these kind of technology that AI is going to run on, and you ask yourself, well, does this make sense? And I I think in a way that it does. I'm not sure we're all I guess really fully aware of the implications of this, right? Um, you have, there was a bunch of uh, companies that were asked, you know, what are you gonna do with AI and are you planning on instituting it? And they're like, yeah, like 100% and it's gonna result in people losing their jobs, um, which I, I think is massive. Of course, it's gonna, here we go, right here. So the survey reveals almost half of all managers aim to replace the workers with AI could use it to lower wages it's really going to also lower you know basically kind of the the overhead that you have right a report by beautiful.ai again there's an angela tld um they've made so much money on it which makes ai powered presentation software surveyed over 3,000 managers about ai tools in the workplace how they're being implemented and what impact they believe these technologies will have the headline takeaways that 41 percent of managers say they're hoping that they can replace employees with cheaper ai tools in 2024 this backs up previous reports that looked at potential job losses caused by generative AI, including one from September that predicted the technology would replace over 2 million. And here's the thing. I mean, this has, you know, societal complications or, you know, excuse me, uh, consequences. But these, these companies are going to end up making more money and saving more money. And what that's going to do is continue to kind of promote the adoption of AI. So, no, I, you know, when you look at these pretty wild movements. I mean, this is tame in the realm of, you know, tech, right, at 4.8%, up 5% now. Um, but no, it, it makes sense, because I think all these companies want to get in on it. And, you know, whichever company comes out first, and, you know, is essentially able to develop, like, a, what I would call is kind of like a baby AI. And what I mean by that is you have a, you have a big problem 
in companies now, especially financial firms, with something called shadow AI. And what shadow AI is, you know, your workers putting in sensitive company information, um, you know, into things like chat GPT, right? Like that's going to a server somewhere that's off-prem and that's not how uh, you, you deal with that kind of stuff. So th they have these kind of skeletons of open AI now, something, there's one that's, that's actually called baby, a uh, baby GPT. Uh, but the point is, is you get this thing and you can program it to kind of do whatever you want and you can make it store the data wherever you want. And that's what we're really talking about as, you know, taking over in a major way. Yeah, totally, you're going to have different packages through things like Microsoft. They'll be able to sell you um, enterprise level AI that do certain things for you. And I'm sure that it'll come with some kind of security as well, especially since they store data on the cloud. But, you know, you're looking at what Google was trying to do with their personal assistant where the thing learned what you needed, the thing, you know, understood the way you spoke and can kind of make decisions for you on, you know, very small bases, that's where we like blow up. And that hasn't even, that surface hasn't even begun to be scratched is what I'm trying to say. And I don't know, I, I think that some of these valuations, although they seem extraordinarily high, I don't see a major bubble with them because it doesn't seem like anything is going to stop the rise of AI in any capacity. And the, the question is like, why would it? Right. Um, anyways, you know, and here's this one from Bloomberg as well. Uh, th this is showing you where everyone's at, right? I mean, bar some pretty unprecedented intervention from government for, you know, for the workers' sake, uh, this is going to continue. So wage cost savings site is the main reason to automate in a CFO study. So the companies are adopting adoption, excuse me, adopting automation to replace labor as they seek to reduce costs about half financial decision makers report implementing software, equipment, or other technology to automate tasks previously completed by employees, according to the survey by the Duke University's Hoqua School of Business and the Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond and Atlanta. So this is like some serious stuff. These are, these are big boys. The main reason to move towards automation was simply to save money, and that dwarfed all other reasons given. We find that companies that experienced higher wage bill growth in 2023 are more likely to have adopted automation. The results suggest that these firms expect to see some return on their investment in the form of reduced pay expenses. And, and this is interesting to note as well, one of the, when the tech companies were firing all the people they had, right, they were kind of trimming the fat as it were to focus on certain things. One of the things they were saying is, you know, we're gonna adopt AI. And I actually had heard a lot of people was like, well, they're just saying that because they had made you know, essentially bad investment decisions or bad business decisions, and this is a way that they can kind of save face on it, right? Um, and I think maybe to some point that's, that could be a valid suggestion, but I mean, look, I, they're, they're telling us right now, and to see something like that had higher wage costs were the ones who were adopting it at a higher rate, I mean, that just kind of explains itself, right? I mean, that's pretty nuts. Look at that cost savings, even over quality control. That's fascinating. Uh, among the firms that automated tasks for the past year, close to 40% noted that this caused them to either slow the rate of new employee hiring, to leave open positions unfulfilled, or to lay off staff. This suggests that although most firms use automation as a complement to the workforce, a substantial minority view automation as a replacement to labor. And let's be real, that is going to be the case. Um, there is a very large cybersecurity company uh, in Florida, and they do stuff with, with phishing. And I have a friend who works in upper management for the company and you know i was talking to her about you know potentials uh in cybersecurity industry like what happens going forward what do they see and she said to me that every board meeting that we have is talking about how ai is going to threaten you know newcomers into the field which is you know massive and think about how many kids go to school to get cs degrees to do something like this and you, you see companies like Cloudflare and Juniper and Cisco all go up uh, because people are starting to take, well, hopefully starting to take security uh, more seriously. And then you talk to someone in the industry who's like, yeah, but most of it's probably going to be automated. You know, they're looking for prompt engineers now, nothing to do with cybersecurity professionals. Super interesting. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back.
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv all right welcome back folks uh over the break i was just looking at the dollar i i didn't i didn't even i didn't even talk about it earlier but we're trading right under 105 it's actually pretty high from, you know, that's where we're at in February. Um, but it, listen, I know we're like slightly down here, right? The Russell just does its thing. But, you know, we're only like it's sideways down, 0.25% in the ES. Gold is still ripping. Silver's good. Copper's ripping. And it's like this market wants a higher price. I mean, even with this higher dollar, right? Which is usually going to depress some stuff in the markets. Anyways, I thought that was just kind of interesting uh, to point out as well. Uh, take a little bit of a look at UPS quickly before the end. There we go. Trading at 147. Uh, what are we looking at? 147.81. And why do I say that? Uh, it's essentially going to become the primary air cargo provider for the United States Postal Service, which is uh, pretty solid. Um, surprise is actually not up a little bit more right now. The UPS announced a four-year extension of its air cargo network contract with FedEx in 2020. In recent years, the USPS had focused increasingly on lowering cuts, and Avenue is through transitioning from air freight to ground transportation. In February, USPS Postmaster General Louis DeJoy said that the USPS is looking to reduce its overall transportation costs by $3 billion. Uh, that is good for all of us taxpayers. Anyways, I just thought that was some interesting news uh, to keep in mind going forward. What I wanted to talk about, because I was you know, saying how dismal things are going to get, um, with AI and, and how that's going to be an investment opportunity to, you know, keep investing or at least justify the cost of some of these semiconductor makers. Um, 
This was an article from Financial Times, and I, I'm going to post this in the den, uh, the, the archive.is of it. But it's just super interesting to look at, right? And this is what I was talking about with cybersecurity, right? You, you hear these things from people. It's like, oh, go get a degree in cybersecurity. There's all these programs, right, to get you trained up. And, like, let's be real in reality. Like, I know people who work in it. People with intro-level jobs are ones with master's degrees in this kind of stuff. It's, it's weird. And uh, it's, it's hard for young people to get into it, really anything. And it's going to be doubly hard uh, when you're putting in AI. But the point is, is I think that reality kind of justifies the price of some of these things. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope you had a wonderful Easter. Uh, come with us tomorrow, 9 a.m. Tommy, we'll do the rest of our show. Take care, guys. I 